Good day everyone! Today we are talking about cybersecurity. I am Marcel from Retro Rabbit and this presentation was given to us by Lola Buskachny from CS Interactive Training. So, this is the basics to understand cybersecurity. Let's get started. First, the technical explanation. Now I'm not going to read this because I know you can read, so we'll just look at the meme. As you can see, this is a big deal. And with every big deal, there is a big technical explanation. And I assume that you've done reading, so we'll go on to the next slide. Luckily, there's also an easy explanation. The easy explanation is that cybersecurity is like the lock on a door for internet and security and IT. Now, obviously you want to prevent people from coming inside the room inside the room you have very important things and the cybersecurity is keeping everybody outside of the room that does not have the required access so let's move on to the next slide and then we'll see how this can be mitigated so first the reason why do we want the lock on the door most first and foremost is we want to protect our information because knowledge is power and that's how we will rule the world with all the power. So as you can see we need to protect the information. Information of the business, information of people, information that makes the world go round. Um, this information is the, one of the most valuable assets to a business and as an IT student you need to keep that in mind if you're either creating systems, designing systems or just plainly thinking about systems everything that you design is revolving around information and that needs to be protected. Now the big question is who wants to steal your information? Luckily we have very nice illustrations that tell you almost everyone wants your information. If it's Facebook that you're giving it away freely to or if it's hackers or scammers or just other employees that's speaking over your shoulder to get your login details, everybody wants a piece of the pie. Everybody wants to get into the door past the locks and the bolts. So how do we actually keep all of these potential threats away and out of our secure system? First, we need to know how do they get into the system. They are able to get into the system via all these different ways. The most problematic, in my opinion, is the human factor. Now, the human factor leads to ransomware, leads to hacking, leads to spyware which is created, or viruses. Everything starts from the human factor. So if we want to know how to stop the human factor or help control the human factor, we need to understand how this binds in to our business. So your business is at risk on three different sections, the hardware, software and data. And as you can see, each different section have four areas where it can be affected by threats and vulnerabilities. And each of these are very specific and need to be catered for in a very distinct way with cybersecurity but that will be mentioned later on or in following videos depending on our time. So you can see once again that employee negligence is one of the biggest factors which contributes to breaches of business security. This means the human factor. External and employees are generally humans there is where the biggest problem lie. It's either by people not being trained correctly or just as stated negligence. We can see that it's not, a, it's not about the technology, it's about the people. We have to create the technology and put in place all the rules and regulation and processes to help the people using the technology. So, the human factor. Social negligence is a big risk for businesses, as we could have seen with the breach chart. 
Now, because a business can't run on its own, we need to have employees. When employees start at a business, they have a tendency to trust what's already been put in place and they generally have an ignorant approach when working with the system. The general consensus is if I have my password and I keep that secure and safe, then the system will do the rest. And this is a very big misconception. As we saw earlier, there is a hardware, software and data facets to a system. And the login where the employee uses his password only contributes to one of the facets. So further on, we need to cater for the people for the reasons they are usually unaware of the risks. They are not always knowledgeable about all the cyber policies that has been put in place and which they need to adhere to, especially if it's a new employee. And the general populace don't know the extent of the criminal's technical skills. They don't know that if you open email, they have access to certain amount of your information. So how do we mitigate the human problem? Awareness and training. That's why usually when you start at a company, you start with training. If you start working at Retro, you will be required to train a certain amount above and beyond your studies. So you thought it all ended, the studying all ended when you leave university? No, sorry. The industry in IT advances way too fast for you to stop studying once you get your degree. There will always be new training, always new technology to learn. So this is a never ending process. And with that said, the cyber threat also increases and advances every day, every second. And if you're one second behind, you already have a security th risk. And as you can see from the second bullet point, this slide were created quite a while ago, since we're already in 2020. If you want to double check the statistic, I can tell you that there is most likely more than 56 billion devices connected to the internet. And this just stresses the fact at how important cyber security is. Um, the Android malware, as you can see, is growing by an exponential percentage. So we need to focus on training. Awareness of what are the different aspects where you need cyber security, how you can implement it, and how you can improve always the step of improvement. If you're one step ahead of the cyber criminal, you will be secure until they catch up. Now, this is also very important for businesses because it doesn't help the, I, the cyber security department has all the knowledge and all the information and all the poli policies if the employees working at the front desk and working at the gate do not know this, are not aware of all these risks, then your whole system crumbles down. It's the same as you go into a security estate and you get past the front, boom, then you're inside. The security has failed. So why all the hype? There's a lot of statistics. As you can see, the malware increasing with more than 2,000% the human factor being the majority, why is there all this hype? So you will see in the next slide, but there has been new legislation once again incorporated, and this is also now relevant to South Africa. We are now also subject to new laws which tightens the belt on security and makes it a very big um, important factor for business to look at. You can't just say, okay, now we'll focus on that later. We'll implement it later. This is stuff that's happening right now. Yes, the Poppy Act. You've most likely heard about this 
until you're sick to your stomach. But the poppy act is here, it is staying, we're not getting rid of it. We need to cater for this. Yes, it's still an act, but it's still very relevant. All the businesses need to adhere. And when you're working for a business, you need to adhere to it. So when you're thinking about a system, when you're designing a system, when you're programming a system, this needs to be kept in mind. So all of the different aspects, as you can see there, needs to be documented and recorded. So yes, the police will now have more work on their hands, but in order to help them and in order to help your business, you need to make sure that this is recorded and captured correctly. Otherwise, if you are subject to a cyber crime, someone hacks your database and encrypts all your information and you need to claim for all of that um, financial loss. If your logging and data capturing is not in place, then you won't be able to give good and accurate information to the police to help with your cyber crimes and therefore your claims might not be paid out to the business. And as you can see from the last point, failing can result in criminal charges for the company or the manager or the owner. So this is, this is quite a big problem. So as we can see, cybersecurity is not an IT problem, responsibility. It is a business or owner's responsibility because failing can result in criminal charges meaning you can lose your business and you can go to jail. So if you're working for a business, you need to make sure that you have stored all the relevant information in order to show that you are the victim of the cyber crime and your case is rock solid for the insurance to be able to pay out, if that is the route that we do follow. <clears throat> what do I and my business stand to lose? So we've seen the three f assets that has a that binds to a business: the hardware, the software, and the data. This is a more elaborate list of what those lead to, and all the other facets to a business: the reputation, the products. So the products link to the intellectual property, the code you write, the processes that you put in place in your business. This can all fall apart if your cybersecurity isn't good enough to keep the cyber criminals out or to help the people problem inside the business. And as you can see the last point, once again the manager or all relevant parties could be fined or jailed. So this is quite a big hype and a serious issue. So what now? How do we mitigate these threats? Control. Now, if you go into any cybersecurity lecture, you will hear, most likely, hear the term that there's a tug of war between cybersecurity and the rest of the company. Cybersecurity wants to lock down everything like Fort Knox so that you can't, so that no one has access to nothing. And everybody else wants access to everything. So it's always a tug of war. How much access do you give your employees and how much do you restrict them at certain areas? The less control people have, the more secure in general your system is. If less people has access to higher risk areas, you are able to control and mitigate those high risk areas. So you can see the controls can be implemented in a lot of different ways. Either the processes, the software, the hardware, or even just policies put in place for a business. All of these help protect the data and help keep out unwanted threats from the business and its information. Lastly, we can see all the areas where controls can be put, on pl put in place. We have software, we have hardware, we have data, as mentioned before extensively, we have policies and procedures, we have uh, 
employees bound to them via policies um, and it must always be efficient and easy to use so that everybody can understand grasp be able to be trained and awareness can be made now the last question is where is the weakest link in a business I'll leave that as an open question thank you for your attention and enjoy your day